So welcome everybody and today we are going to talk about decentralized testing for SARS coronavirus 2. I'm Vittorio Sagiomo and I'm part of Bionanotechnology group in Wageningen University. So first of all, what's the problem? We have so far centralized testing. So it means that if you have a disease, you just go to the hospital, you get tests and that's it. It works perfectly as long as you are not in a pandemic of such dimension. If you are in a pandemic like the 2019, 2020, and now 2021, you have a problem because then you have million people that needs to be tested in very short amount of time. And you cannot do this with centralized testing. There are few ways of doing it, but they are not super powerful. And sooner or later, you will end up in a bottleneck. If it's the number of machines that you have, if it's the number of people that you have, the, the time, quite, there are quite a lot of bottlenecks there. Different case if it's in the decentralized testing. So decentralized testing means that you are testing at your home, uh, at your home in your own place, and then you're just sending the data to a centralized place. So in this case, you are moving data and you are not moving people, which is already way better. And I think this is the way how it should be done. Because if you put 2 million people in a hospital every single day, that's not going to work. So decentralized testing. Let's check how or actually what do we need for making a test at home. We need a molecular test. It should be very simple to use and also robust because we don't have a laboratory, we want to do it at home. And I'm talking now about DNA or RNA testing. Uh, so I'm talking about PCR, which is the standard used nowadays. But for a PCR, you need a purified sample. You need multiple temperature for running this test. And sometimes can be moody. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The lamp, on the other hand, uh, can work on dirty samples, uh, requires only one temperature. So it's actually easier to use. And it's quite sturdy. So most of the time it works. This is one, and multiple groups are actually working on LAMP and sample preparation, which so far is one of the biggest problem here. Uh, you want to do it on saliva compared to the swab uh, because you cannot do it yourself. And then we need the device for running the LAMP test. And not many people were working on this field, so we say, okay, um, you don't need only uh, sample preparation and how to make the test, but also a device for running this test. Hypothetically, the best that you want to have here, it's a device that it's cheap, cheap to produce, but also cheap to buy uh, for the final user. Uh, should be easy to produce in millions in short amount of time. Um, should be simple to use everywhere. So independently, if you are in Europe, if you are in Africa, if you are in the middle of the desert, it should be usable. And as a pro, we would also like to have a small waste footprint because if you produce something in millions, you need to dispose them. So far, they are commercially available. Um, those are perfect for lab environments, but are not perfect if you want to do it at home because they usually are too expensive and too difficult to operate if you are not uh, a lab technician or you are used to uh, laboratory procedures. There are some do-it-yourself option, for example, the Sauswide, uh, this one, or also you can use an Arduino, very cheap. We published this one a couple of years ago and it's easy to use. It's relatively cheap. So we are around 10, 20 dollars or euros. The problem here is that they are not easy to produce in millions. So if I want to produce, let's say five millions by the end of the week, it's practically impossible. And they will do a large amount of e-waste. So e-waste, those one you will dispose after the pandemic, if the pandemic will finish sooner or later, you need to dispose them. And that's not easy. Then we have another way, which is a NINA. So it's called non-instrumental non nucleic acid amplification. And those are already quite nice because they use a PCM. So this part here, it's a phase change material. Phase change material, it means that if you increase the temperature from solid, it will get to liquid, like most of the material, but then it will have a lag at a certain melting point. So this lag is what we are looking for. So if I increase the temperature, it doesn't pass, it doesn't move from solid to liquid 
as soon as possible, but it has a lag at certain temperature. So this is super interesting because it means that you can run a lamp at single temperature just using this material. The problem with this or with those is that one, the vessel is too complex to produce. So this one is practically a dewer. You have uh, an insulation vacuum, uh, but also the aluminum. You need to produce this one in a large amount in a short time, and this is not really feasible. The other problem is that for running the reaction, um, you have, or for increasing the temperature, you have an exothermic reaction. So you mix two chemicals, uh, they will increase the temperature, and this one will keep the temperature stable. The problem is logistics because you need to ship a lot of those um, highly reactive chemicals, uh, but also safety because if you want to use it at home, you don't want to give those highly reactive chemicals uh, at home. And another thing is that they are disposable. So for running one reaction, you mix them together, then you dispose them, and you need to use fresh one for running a new reaction. So those are the problem of those Nina instruments, or actually non-instruments. So we thought, OK, we can do something easier and probably better than those, and in a really simple way. So actually just using a, co a coffee capsule, which is aluminum and it's from Nespresso, you use the face change material and you have a 3D printed holder. So those are the only three things that you need in this device. And if you look, this one, it's just a rendering, but if you look at the real sample that we did, it just looked like this. So you have your vial inside, you have your Nespresso, and you have your face change material. We checked, uh, we use one specific face change material that keeps the temperature around 64, and it, it just works. So we check the temperature of the boiling water, and it's going to decrease. The room temperature stays stable, but inside this capsule, the temperature increases quite, quite fastly, and that's because the aluminum is very thin in those capsules, so you want this temperature ramp as fast as possible, but also keeps the temperature constant for around 25 minutes. So even if the water is higher in temperature, this material can keep the temperature constant at 64, and when the water gets colder, it still keeps those 64 degrees. So this is a perfect material, but also a perfect vessel. How does it work? Uh, it's super simple. You just need boiling water. As soon as it's boiled, you put your Corona Espresso in there and close the fire or stop the fire. Wait for 25, 30 minutes, depending on the sample that you're running. Just remove them. And then we use a colorimetric analysis, which is standard for lamp reactions. So this one is the negative control, and you have three positive in this case. Um, we tested with purified RNA, and it works, but we also test with a real sample from, um, from persons, from people. So this one, they were also checked with PCR, and they work. So the positive are positive, the negative are negative, and everything works quite well. So this simple capsule, it's really cheap to produce and to buy. So this final um, Corona Espresso costs 20 cents if you want to buy it. If you want to produce, probably costs less than 10 cents. It's easy to produce a million on short amount of time because we are using Corona, um, sorry, we are using the Nespresso capsule. So you already have a lot of production line that can produce in billions, actually, those capsules in a very short amount of time. It's simple to use everywhere because the only things that you need for running this reaction is practically water and fire or whatever method you want to boil the water. And another thing is that also it has very small waste footprint. So the material that we are using here, it's uh, biodegradable PLA. It's not really biodegradable, but they call it biodegradable. So you can change this one if you want to make it in aluminum, it would be better. Then we have the PCM. Uh, so the phase change material that it's literally wax, so you can just burn it out and you have the aluminum capsule also in this case uh, Nespresso already has place um, where you can recycle the aluminum so aluminum is one of the best material that you can recycle it's uh, way cheaper to recycle aluminum than to mine it new so most of the aluminum that you are using is probably coming from a recycling place 
So this is our idea. It's nice, it's cheap. You can produce it in a million times. It's simple to use. It's practically almost universal because you just need water. Many, some places unfortunately uh, still are without water and it has a very small waste footprint. This project was done um, in our laboratory, but together with TNO Health and also was sponsored by the uh, TKI Health Holland. You can find this paper online and yeah, that's it. If you have any question, please ask me. Thank you.